disorders really represent um, what we might think of as kind of the end stage of a continuum of a whole set of body image, eating fitness, and weight concerns. Um, a lot of people in the culture, particularly girls, seem to struggle with body image concerns, although increasingly we're seeing body image concerns in boys as well. gentlemen, I have it on very good authority that the quest for perfection our society demands can leave the individual gasping for breath at every turn. Fashion models have become increasingly thinner, with body weights nearly 25% less than the average American woman, who weighs 140 pounds. I think there are two primary things going on right now with the cultural availability of eating disorders. First, the whole society. 
is involved in um, the perfection game, all right, that we all can fix our bodies, make our bodies over. And then I think among young women, they're increasingly tuned in to a celebrity culture where the models and actresses' bodies are considerably thinner than they have ever been in the past. This is very seductive and hard for young girls to resist. This is not about illness. This is about idealized beauty and perfection of a certain type. Another reason we believe we're not influenced is that advertising's influence is quick, it's cumulative, and for the most part, it's subconscious. As the editor-in-chief of Advertising Age, again, the major publication of the advertising industry once said, only 8% of an ad's message is received by the conscious mind. The rest is worked and reworked deep within the recesses of the brain. So it's not just that we see these images once or twice or even a hundred times. They stay with us and we process them mostly subconsciously. They create an environment, an environment that we all swim in as fish swim in water. And just as it's difficult to be healthy in a toxic physical environment, if we're breathing poisoned air, for example, or drinking polluted water, so it's difficult to be healthy in what I call a toxic cultural environment, an environment that surrounds us with unhealthy images and that constantly sacrifices our health and our sense of well-being for the sake of profit. Ads sell more than products. They sell values, they sell images, they sell concepts of love and sexuality, of success, and perhaps most important, of normalcy. To a great extent, they tell us who we are and who we should be. Well, what does advertising tell us about women? It tells us, as it always has, that what's most important is how we look. So the first thing the advertisers do is surround us with the image of ideal female beauty. Women learn from a very early age that we must spend enormous amounts of time, energy, and above all, money, striving to achieve this look and feeling ashamed and guilty when we fail. And failure is inevitable because the ideal is based on absolute flawlessness. She never has any lines or wrinkles. She certainly has no scars or blemishes. Indeed, she has no pores. And the most important aspect of this flawlessness is that it cannot be achieved. No one looks like this, including her. And this is the truth. No one looks like this. The supermodel Cindy Crawford once said, I wish I looked like Cindy Crawford. <laughs> 